this next lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can work problems with multiple units. The section doesn't really add any new skills. It's just going to help us deepen our understanding of what we've been doing. Most real processes are made up of several smaller processes. In the old Fred problem, we got an introduction to this idea. To analyze these <clears throat> more complex systems, what you want to do is analyze either those individual steps or combinations of these processes. So we can sometimes draw our own box to look at combinations. Frequently, this makes a more manageable problem. Usually, an overall system balance will be incredibly helpful. So we're going to look at one example in this uh, video. In this particular one, acetone is used in the manufacture of many chemicals, and it's also used as a solvent. <clears throat> but a lot of restrictions are placed on release of acetone vapor to the environment, so we are working to design an acetone recovery system. The diagram is shown below, and the um, requirements on compositions are in a table that I'll show you next. The gas is going to enter the absorber at 1,400 kilograms per hour, and we want to find the flow rates of all the other streams. So just looking at this diagram, we have an entering gas that enters into an absorber, and water is going to also enter into the absorber. The water is going to absorb some of the acetone, and then clean air will leave the absorber. So this is going to be the environmentally scrubbed air. This acetone in water, however, now then we've got polluted water, so we're gonna send this to a distillation column. The two products out of a distillation column are typically called the bottoms and the overhead. The bottoms product will just take off as a product. The overhead is going to go on to a condenser where it will then leave as the distillate product. Um, this would be a vapor, this will be a liquid. Liquids are easier to handle. So we want to build the material balance table and the degree of freedom table for this process. The material table, remember, is based on all of the streams. So I have these numbered as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and those are entered in the top line of the material balance table. My material components are water, acetone, and air. Those are entered on the left-hand side. And then, of course, the total. Now, the mass fractions are given in the table here. So this all of those are given information, okay? My basis for this problem is a flow rate of 1,400 kilograms per hour in the entering gas. That's taken from the problem statement. All of this other information would have been given information, and the entering gas is stream two, so 1,400 kilograms per hour. What we're asked to find is all of these other flow rates. So flow rate one, flow rate three, flow rate four, flow rate five, flow rate six, and flow rate seven. Now, I do not have compositional data given on streams one, six, or seven. We can do this several different ways. Um, I'm going to do it kind of the less thought out way. And let's just name these compositions as, let's say, X, Y, and Z for stream one, and X, Y, and Z for stream six. For stream seven, I have one piece of information given. Remember, sum of X's has to equal one, and these already equal one, so therefore, there must be no air in that stream. So this is the variables that I've got, got. I've got the basis entered, and I did use a little bit of thought there. Now I will comment. Let's look at the what's happening here. I have a stream coming in and a stream coming out. 
I have labeled these as if the compositions are going to be different. But if this is at steady state and there's no reaction, how would the water become anything but water or the air or the acetone? So therefore, I actually know these. Right, so I could have done it either way. It wouldn't have been right or wrong either way. One place, you know, may save me a little work later. So there's, these are typically not going to have right or wrong answers. So this is my material balance table. So what if we then wanted to look at the, uh, no. <laughs> Degree of freedom table. On these, what I typically do is I do one of these for each piece of equipment. And then I do one on the overall. The overall is based on if I were to draw a box. Okay, so everything that came into the total system and everything that came out and I just ignored everything else. So that's what the overall is, is it's looking at the big picture as if it's just one unit, one big black box. Now let me erase that because I've sort of muddied it. We can't read it anymore. Now, this is where it's very helpful that I've listed the streams. So in for the absorber, I have one and two that come in and three and four that come out. So one and two come in, three and four come out. By listing them as the feed and the uh, exiting streams, it's gonna make me write my equations a little bit more efficiently, okay? The variables for streams one, two, three, and four are x1, y1, z1, f1, f3, and F4. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six variables. Okay? The number of material balances I'll be able to write is three because I have three components. For sum of X's, I have one for stream one. Streams two, three, and four are well specified. And process specs. Did I have any additional information? No. And so my degrees of freedom, six minus four, leaves me with two degrees of freedom. Not ready to solve that one. So how about the distillation column? The distillation column has stream four come in and streams five and six go out. Okay, so in streams four, five, and six, okay, my unknowns are F4, F5, F6, X6, X, Y6, and Z6. Okay, so again, I have six unknowns. I have material balances, three, because of that's the how many components. Okay, sum of x's, I have one, and process specs, I have zero, and again, I end up with two as my degrees of freedom. Okay, so still not ready to work that one. Now, some of you may have looked ahead and thought, wait a minute, there's no air here, there's no air here, how can there be any air in stream six? Yes, that's also equivalent to the logic that we used on the previous slide. So you can use some of these things at any stage in the problem solving process. The condenser, stream six comes in, stream seven comes out. My variables here are x6, y6, Z6, F6, and F7. My number of unknowns, therefore, is five. I have three material balances. I have one sum of X. I have no process specs, so I have one degree of freedom. 
This one's closer, but it's not quite there. And then I have my overall. Okay, so the overall remembers where I'm looking at just putting a big giant black box around all of this. Okay, and so in that case, I have one and two come in. I have three, five, and seven go out. For stream one, I have the unknowns X1, Y1, Z1, and F1. For stream two, I have no unknowns. For stream three, I have F3. For stream five, I have F5. And for stream seven, I have F7. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven unknowns. My material balances, I still have three components, so that is once again three. And I get one sum of x equations. I have no process specs, and so my degrees of freedom will be three. So let's begin writing equations. So let's just do these. None of them are going to be perfect. Let's just start seeing what we can do and if we could maybe come up with a best plan. So on my absorb, I wrote my balances. I have my continuous, or excuse me, my total material balance. I have the material balance on two of my components, okay? These three actually do have a solution. I can solve for F1, F3, and F4. The absorber is not fully solved, but I can solve for a portion of it. So I've done that. I've got the answers shown here. If I go to the overall system balance, using that information that I just found, I'm able to write these balances and solve for F5 and F7. If I know F7, I can do a condenser balance to find F6. So I have the flow rates in each of the streams. So now then, what did they ask me to solve? I have not found all of the mole fractions in each stream. I could do that if it was required, but oh, they only asked me to find the flow rates in each stream. So therefore the problem is solved and I have completed the problem. I have not solved for every possible unknown. Again, this becomes kind of a common theme. If you don't have a degrees of freedom of zero, you will not be able to solve for all possible variables. So at this point, we will take a break, come back in to the next video, and we will look at another example.